This module, we are going to provide a bit of background on world crop production. I'm going to tell you where crops produced are in this world. This is a bit analogous to the population uh, module, first one we looked at, except now we are going to be looking at where the land is. That is one thing that cannot be moved. Land is land, so it is a primary determinant of where agricultural occurs and hence influences trade. Our reading is the same one as for Module 1. We continue with world agriculture towards 2030 and 2050. If you would, please read table, or excuse me, pages 10 through 22. Again, 10 through 22. The outline of this module is as follows. First, we're going to show where the arable cropland is and where it's at, and that again will dictate to a large extent where trade happens. We're then going to talk about crop production areas and trade in cereals and oil seeds. So we're going to focus on those cereals and oil seeds. And finally, while we're not going to be talking about it so much in this module, just a major, major fact here, total production will equal acres times the yield per acre. Whatever we're producing, it will be acres times yield per acre. Our next module will talk about trends in yields per acre. One thing to note before we getting into this topic, and this is coming from page 10 of our reading, World Agriculture Towards 2030 and 2050. This again is from page 10. Look at A and B here. I started those and circled those, and this again comes directly from the reading. There are sufficient spare food production resources in certain parts of the world waiting to be employed if only economical and institutional frameworks would so dictate. Again, this comes down to the fact that we could produce enough foodstuffs to feed the world. It's non-agricultural factors that are dictating that those don't happen in certain parts of the world, which is item B here. Production constraints and were continue to be important to, de to be determinants of food se security. However, they operate and can cause Malthusian situation to prevail at the local level. So it's the local level typically where we will see food shortages and those could be alleviated by trade, but it's often the case that they happen because of other factors going on. Here, and we've shown this in class, is a map of arable land. Uh, arable land in the world. Again, you see two of those listed there. Cropland in the orange and pasture land in the wheat. In, in the green, excuse me. So you can see those areas of, uh, of, the, of the location of those here in the world. I'm going to point out several of those. First off, there is North America. North America, where we are at, is a major production area. Uh, both cereals and oil seeds are produced here, and this is an area where we have large surpluses and hence export possibilities. The other one major producing area is South America or another major producing area is South America, Brazil and Argentina and this is a growing one. There are acres that are being brought on to production and it looks like they continue can continue to be brought on into production so this area likely will grow in production in the future. There is Western Europe, large amounts of arable land, not too many surpluses, and also large numbers of people. Western Europe has generally limited, or, or has reached the area that it can farm. There's little more that it can be brought into production. Hence, growth in this area will likely be um, dictated by yield increases per acre. Next is Eastern Europe, former Soviet Union, and Russia itself. There are large amounts of 
area that can be brought into production here or are in production here and there's a potential to increase its production India another major producing area but large amounts of people there so it's probably brought on all the production that it's going to bring on and then finally China large producing area large amounts of population as we're looking at food production they are divided out in various types you saw those listed in your reading and here we listed those out as fiber which would be things you wear cotton would be a major item there fruits oil crops oil seeds pulses root crops and root crops would be potatoes and as well as some African specific sorts of roots vegetables and cereals this slide shows 1961 then 2007 and it shows trends note that most of them are going up except for fiber fiber is staying steady to maybe coming down fiber cotton fibers are face competition from petrochemical sorts of of uh, fabrics in its uh, that can be replaced it the other one that has remained relatively constant is cereals it went up a bit down a bit and overall is down ah, maybe up a bit in 2007 through 1961 I want you to also note that there there there's two that dominate in terms of arable acres cereals and oil seeds cereals and oil seeds provide different things different characteristics um, generally to production cereals primarily provide energy or mostly energy their calories their starches their carbs cereals are the basic building block of providing calories in a diet they're generally the first thing if you're going into an undernourished aid area you want to make sure they have calories so you work on developing those crops the types of cereals that we see out here are corn wheat and rice those would be the three major ones and there's an other cereal starch some of those some some of those some of the ones in the roots area would also be cereals or not cereals so much as but a major source of calories and an example of that would be potatoes but again in general the crops the cereal crops are three major ones are corn wheat and rice oil seeds on the other hand provide fat and protein and in fact you can see that in your crushing when we crush soil beans what we pull out of it is a meal which is primarily protein and a oil which is primarily fat the crops that are oil seeds are soybeans sunflowers palm oil canola with the major one being by far soybeans soybeans is are the major crop in the oil seed area these crops are relatively newer in in being brought on into production and they're also so they essentially happened since the 1940s prior to that humans got most of their fat and protein from meat milk and eggs so if you're looking at a diet oil sites provide fat and protein the other sort of major category that can provide that again are meat milk eggs livestock based products again if we look at a nutrition label if you look at the major items that are on that label that's fat carbohydrates and protein they also list so cholesterol and protein but sort of the building blocks are blocks are fat carbohydrates protein carbs again the primary source would be sort of cereals protein and fat would be 
oil seeds as well as livestock and meat. So if you're looking at crops, cereal crops are substitutes for one another. For example, corn and wheat. Corn and wheat, you can make cornmeal, you can make cornbread. Wheat, you can make bread. Rice, they all sort, they're all very close substitutes. Oil seeds, the oil seeds amongst themselves are also major competitors or of one another. So, canola, the uses of canola, except for some very specific uses, would be to make oil, and that would compete with soybean oil. I'm now going to give you a feel for the where the major crop producing areas are. And you see a map here, which comes from our world and data, and it has the world in four places. Um, the first area, or the upper left corner, is maize. The upper right corner is rice. The lower right corner is soybeans, and the lower left is wheat. And it gives you a feel for the intensity of all their, the, those four respective crops and where they happen. I'm for first focusing on corn, upper left, and you can see two major areas of production there. And this will also become evident as we, as you do your assignment, major areas are corn and China. For rice, rice is primarily an Asian crop, India, Indian subcontinent, through Vietnam, Thailand, etc., up the Pacific Rim. So most of the rice is produced in that area. Although we do have production areas in Africa, South America, as well as North America. Soybeans. Soybeans are in several different areas. You'll notice a splotch of those in Asia, close to the Pacific. But our major production areas are North and South America. North America where actually where we're at and then South America Brazil and Argentina finally wheat lower left corner wheat is pretty much produced every anywhere there's arable land and that does make its supply or following its supply particularly difficult because it's produced pretty much everywhere in the world and there's a lot of countries that produce it but with none of them really having a sizable uh, majority of the production. So that these four maps give you a feel for where the major oil seed and cereals are produced. As those my maps would imply, or my uh, designation of major production areas, U.S. is a major producer in three of those four crops. And this map here shows corn, and we're going to go corn, soybeans, and wheat, and where those, are, where those crops are produced. Corn is produced in the Corn Belt, Illinois, Iowa, southern Minnesota, in through Nebraska, eastern Nebraska, north and south Dakota, over into Indiana and Ohio. Illinois is usually the second largest producer of the crop, corn, and Iowa is the first. Again, Iowa's Illinois, Midwest, Corn Belt is where corn is produced in, or the majority of it is produced in America. Soybeans has, again, the traditional Corn Belt, and also Southern, or if you go down into the, the along the Mississippi, the Mer Mississippi Delta region, and it's also expanding out west. Soybeans is one of the crops that has been expanding more. And it is, is a competitor with both corn and wheat for acres. But again, traditional corn belt as well as more in the southern area or more in the southern area as well. Wheat, major wheat belt is in the western United States, Kansas, Nebraska, and then up through Washington, Montana. Wheat is a generally needs a lower or doesn't need as much rainfall as does corn, or for that matter soybeans, but corn in particular. Hence, it's produced in drier areas in the United States. Finally, 
we want to talk about expansion. To do that, I want to, I'm showing you a map of types of land in the world, and this gives forested acres, savanna, cropland, wetland, and you can see the list continuing there. In this map, cropland, which represents 9% according to the data source of total land in the world, 9% of it's in cropland. We can bring more of other types of land into production. The major ones that will be brought onto production are first, savannas and grassland. Savannas and grassland generally make fairly good arable land or land for farming. Following that, forest. Forests generally are worse than savannas and cropland. Illinois was the prairie state. Prairie makes wonderful farmland because it makes for a deep soil, generally, given the rainfall. So as we're looking at expansion, we will generally be looking at areas that moving into first and foremost savanna and grassland areas. If you're looking at those, you can see here I, there are three areas indicated as being potentials for expansion. First of those is South America. We're seeing that grow, and we'll likely to see that continue to grow as grassland and pasture is converted into farmland. We have that possibility in Africa. A number of savannas and grassland could be converted into additional farmland. And then another area is Eastern Europe. And there it isn't so much a grassland changing phenomenon or grassland and savanna changing into farmland as so much as bringing back production that was there, was underutilized under the Soviet regime, and now bringing that back on into production. In any case, here you see the summary of those, South America, Africa, Ukraine, and then some of the concerns about bringing those back on. In South America, economics and political stability is a concern, and probably less so than in Africa, but economics and political stability is a concern in South, Africa, South America. Africa, re weather-related issues. Um, African production or African weather is less benign than South American and North American uh, weather. And then the almost insurmountable economic and political issues. In the Ukraine, we have economic stability concerns. There is or was a war going on in that area, so economic stability. And then there's another one, land reform, which we will talk about later in the semester. I want you to note here the importance of North America, South America, and China. Those three areas have large amounts of arable land. China does as well, but note the Chinese production, or excuse me, Chinese population. If you're working in agriculture, it's highly likely that you will be concerned about and maybe even located in South America and China. I mean, those are the growth areas in all major companies, multinational companies, have presence in those areas. All right, our review questions. India and China have had a great deal of arable land in production. Why would they not likely be exporters of grain? And then, what are the major production areas of rice, corn, and soybeans? So that concludes our module and gives you some idea of the types of questions that will be on the exam.